and welcome to this week's newsletter and this week we'll start with club competition news and we'll start with the men's club championship held on Sunday and the Sir John Droghorn Trophy. Um, in what was a closely fought contest in the scratch prize, the club champion this year is Danny Weston. Well done, Danny. He shot two under par, 71-69, to win by two shots from young Tom Naylor. So well done to Tom. He shot level par. Then we had Danny Perring and Jack Butcher tied for third on 150. So well done, Danny. Another club championship to add to your ever-growing resume. Well done, mate. In the handicap and the Sir John Drugform Trophy, um, we had Tom Naylor. He once came second in the scratch off his four handicap. He shot 134, net 68, net, six, sorry, net 66, net 68 for a total of 134 to win the handicap competition by four shots from club captain Howard Thornton. Well done, Howard. Howard came second on 138, and Martin Farrell came third on 140, beating Jack Butcher and Brad Thompson on countback also all on 140 for two rounds so a great event uh, the greens were especially fantastic by all accounts i wasn't here on sunday but everybody said how great the greens were uh, well done danny and his team to prepare in the golf course so well on sunday morning i know it looked, took a lot of time and effort so well done gents it was great but yeah well done to tom and well done for danny for winning the two main prizes and well done mr captain shame you didn't do that on thursday mate more about that later. Right, anyway, okay. Carrying on then, we'll go back to last uh, Thursday's men's midweek Stableford and we'll go with Division 1 where Ben Lutey won with 40 points, beating Martin Farrow into second on 38 points. In Division 2, Nick Bickers won with 38 points. Well done, Nick. Beating Morris Looms, Martin Pessel and Scott Watson on countback all on 36 points. And in Division 3, Peter Armstrong won with a fine 42 points. Well done, Peter. Great score, that. Beating Max Evans into second on 36. And Brian Reed into third on 35 points. Well done. On Friday, oh, sorry, on Friday the ladies had their competition, which was moved from Wednesday, because on Wednesday, uh, Andre had her ladies' captain's day. And what a horrible day. Very, very wet. Uh, they all got absolutely soaked, but they all made it round. 18 holes for Andre's benefit. Uh, there's a team competition uh, where the winning team was Maggie Hart, Vonnie Thornton and Sue Linden. Well done to you three for sticking it out for 18 holes, number one, but winning uh, Andre's captain's day. Andre, I hope you had a really good day despite the weather. So the ladies played their competition on Friday this week. And where are we? We've got to find it now. Here we go. So uh, on Friday they played the Golf Foundation and Commemorative Plate Stableford where Sheena Emmerich won with 41 points. Well played Sheena, great score, beating Gail Chapman into second on 40 points and Kim Potter into third on 38 points. Good scoring there ladies, all under par comfortably, well done. And then Saturday we had a roll up Stapleford where Brendan Goff won with 36 points beating Ray Thompson into second on 35 points. On Monday, we had the Junior Open. Unfortunately, we were lacking in numbers from Junior, Galston Juniors, unfortunately. We had two tar part take. Um, Jack and uh, Callum were both away playing for the county, so they couldn't play. And holidays and work, and we only got two of Galston players. But we had 20 players in total come and play, where uh, a young lady called Maisie Farrelly won, which was quite good for me, because I gave her her very first golf lessons over at Deerham. Um, probably now eight years ago I think um, she's literally just turned 18 she's just about to go to university um, she's now got down to a seven handicap and she won the Ralph Moffat Junior Open on Monday in probably what will be one of her last junior tournaments so it was made up for Maisie well done she shot a 77 four over par which was fantastic well done Maisie Right, okay, carrying on the competitions front, we'll talk about the professional tours, where in America, Justin Thomas was phenomenal around Medina, which was the same place where uh, Europe won the Ryder Cup in 2012, was it? Yeah, the Miracle of Medina. Justin Thomas rips it apart, lots of rain, the golf course was very, very soft. I think he shot 24 under par through four rounds, which is an amazing golf round there. Um, and only won by two or three shots, I think, so it was superb golf from him. That was in the FedEx playoff event. They now head over to Eastlake for the playoff 
finals, uh, the Tour Championship where Tiger won last year. Unfortunately, he didn't make it this year. He's not played enough events since the Masters really to qualify. So he hasn't qualified to defend his title. But they all go over to East Lake with a new sort of format this time to decide who the FedEx Cup champion is. So Justin, Lo Justin Thomas starts 10 under par. Next best starts eight under par. Next best starts six under par. And they go all the way back until I think 10th place starts at one under par and then the rest start at level par. So basically Justin Thomas has a head start in the competition for the FedEx Cup in an effort to try and make it easier to understand. We'll see how that plays out over the week though. Uh, in, in European Tour news, uh, Thomas Peters won. It was great to see Thomas Peters, another rider cupper from 2014. Hasn't lived up to the high expectations everybody had for him. I think he played Ryder Cup 2016 actually. But every, he hasn't lived up to the expectations, but he did win again for the first time since the Ryder Cup. Up. Uh, he won at the Czech Open. Uh, he won by a couple of shots there, so it was good to see him back in the winner's circle. Lots and lots of talent. Bombs the golf ball an absolute long way, putts well, and you can't really understand why he doesn't really produce the form that he should do. Okay, right. Okay, in this week's tip of the week, we're going to talk about fairway bunkers, okay, and how we get the golf ball getting out of fairway bunkers, but also maintaining that distance that we need. So let's say, for example, here, I'm over on the practice bunker, but let's say I've got a golf shot of 150 yards to the green, okay? Now, normally 150 yards would be an eight iron. Now, what we've got to try and work out in a bunker is will an eight iron go high enough to clear this lip of the bunker? If I can hit an eight iron out of here and clear that lip, then there's every chance I can get the ball onto the green. But if the lip was a bit higher, would my eight iron go high enough to get it out? Not so sure. So when you get into a fairway bunker, not only do you want to think about getting the ball out, that's the first number, that's the first rule, get the ball out, yeah? Okay, but also you want to think about how far you can advance it down the fairway. So you want to pick a club that you can maybe potentially get to the green. So if you've got a really flat bunker, and we've got several flat bunkers out on that golf course, yeah? We could potentially use a three wood out of the bunker if we feel we can get the ball up in the air quick enough to get it over the lip of the bunker. So when you go into a fairway bunker, don't always reach for your sand wedge. Also try a different golf club out there as well. Maybe even a three wood if you can do it, okay? Now, let me help you out with, um, with the technique how to get out of these fairway bunkers. Okay. So the key to hitting fairway bunker shots is to try and hit the golf ball first. Normally when we're in bunkers greenside, we want to try and hit the sand first. But when we're trying to play out of fairway bunkers and we're trying to get distance on the shot, we want to make sure we try and catch the ball first. So we want to try and catch it as cleanly as possible. Okay, so right on the bottom of the ball as we would do for every other shot. Now it's difficult because the moment we touch a grain of sand in the bunker, it tends not to go very far. So how do we guarantee we hit the ball first? Well, to be honest, quite a lot of practice. But what we can do to make sure we get a nice clean strike, we can hold our hands down the club a little bit more, okay? To make the golf club a little bit shorter so we catch the bottom of the ball first, okay? So let's give it a go. So generally, ball hands down the club, ball a bit more in the middle of the starts to try and hit the bottom of the ball first. And if we make our nice, normal, long swing, I've got my nine iron here which I feel I can get out of this bunker and still get the distance on it. Provided I make a nice golf swing and hit that ball first, then... Okay, I called it a fraction heavy, so it's probably gonna come up 10, 15 yards short of the green, okay? But that's better than going with my sandwich and hitting it well and coming up 40 yards short of the green, okay? And if I'm honest, I'd probably rather catch it a little bit heavy, that way I'm probably gonna make sure I do get it out of the bunker, but if I'm trying to be perfect, then I would've tried to got it on the green and got it absolutely clean. But when you're in a fairway bunker, try and catch the ball as cleanly as you possibly can without thinning it into the face, okay? And always pick a club that number one is gonna clear the lip, but then number two maybe give you a bit more distance down the fairway. Give it a go and let me know what you think. Okay, lastly for this week, we're gonna go on to fixtures for the next seven days. Actually, I'm away next week, so from Sunday, I'm away, I've got 10 days off, looking forward to a nice summer break with a family, heading down to Devon, which is, I believe, like Devon, it's a very nice part of the world, isn't it, yeah? So I'm going down there for 10 days, so Jack and Ollie will be in charge. I'm sure they will look after you as and where they can. But for you guys playing golf, first of all, 
Anyway, Wednesday the uh, 21st, the ladies have got their competition going out between nine and half past 11. Thursday the 22nd, men's midweek Stapleford day, so always a very busy day. Friday the 23rd, we've got the Junior Club Championships uh, going out between 11 and 12, okay. Some of them are only doing nine holes, some of the little ones, so just give them a bit of space, yeah, okay. And then Friday afternoon, we've got the NSPGA playing against the ladies, one till three. Saturday the 24th, we've got the family golf and summer barbecue. So if any of you want to invite any friends or family that don't play golf up for a game of golf, we have a bit of fun and games. We go play six holes, we play one, two, seven, eight, nine, ten, all from the blue tees. And it's a great way of getting those people that don't play into golf just to give them a little taste about what it's all about. And then we have a barbecue afterwards and surprises involved as well. I'm going to be playing my wife, so I'm not sure if we will end up on holiday or not. We might end up with divorced after that, but either way, it should be good fun. Um, and then Sunday, uh, we've got the monthly medal and silver jubilee cup, so the golf course will be closed all morning. Monday, which is back holiday Monday, we've got a Dynamac Trophy Texas Scramble, which is a shotgun start, so the golf course will be closed in the afternoon. Next Tuesday, next Tuesday uh, the scene is got a match versus Russ, 8 45 till 10. And then next Wednesday, it's Lady Invitation Day, where it's a shotgun start for 1 o'clock, so the golf course will be closed in the afternoon. Right, okay, that's everything for this week, apart from Ollie is still looking for a partner to play in an East Region Pro Am down in. Bishop Stortford, I think, on the 4th and 5th of September. So if you fancy going out for a couple of days with Ollie to play in a Pro-Am pro at Bishop Stortford, which is a lovely golf course, by the way, um, in the East Region Pro-Am, then please contact Ollie by the end of today. I think he needs, yeah, he needs to confirm that he's playing or not by the end of today. So if you want to play from, give him a bell in the shop here with Air all afternoon. Right, that's it for now. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you when I get back from my holiday on Wednesday the 4th of September. Bye-bye.